Good morning, coaches. Again, I try to go through a little bit of different things this very first week of practice to share before we get too far along in the season and, and makes it a little bit harder time-wise with scouting and everything. I want to share a couple things that we've done. Uh, one's going to look familiar. A lot of new members of our group, so I'm going to explain this one. The first one is going to be our four-on-three paint touch game. Again, a lot of you guys have seen me talk about this one before, but I know we've got a lot of new members in our dribble drive group, so I wanted to share this one out today. Again, I'll stand down here with the ball. We're going to go into our slot, slot, corner, corner. We're going to invert our triangle four on three. And the key to this game is um, your scoring system. And if your scoring system uh, it needs to match your philosophy. And for us, we have plus five on a one-footed pass for a three. So again, I'm discouraging the bad running one foot floater that may be off balance or through arms. That doesn't mean you don't shoot the floater. Um, what I found on the women's side is sometimes there's, there's a better shot. So that would be an example of a player driving in, hands high on defense, and we kick it out for a wide open three. We have plus four for a backdoor lay in, plus four for a regular three. Okay plus three for a land inside the charge circle and plus one for anything that's between the charge circle in that mid range. It happens with a shot clock, so we can't not, not reward it. And again, the way it will start is I will throw the ball to any of the four players and it's live on the catch. The defense has to scramble, sink, Again, we're a dribble drive team, so we may cut that player out to get a create a bigger gap. We may throw it up top and loop cut or nail cut that player out to get a better drive. But we'll typically do this for about three minutes per team. And we will keep score. Later on in the season, it might get down to two and a half minutes, but you want to allow the offense to create a little bit of flow. And again, if you want to emphasize offensive rebounding and so forth, you could also do that. Uh, second one uh, that I'm going to talk about today is our five on five change and transition. We're doing a lot of teaching this first week. And so in our defensive half court, you know, we'll start out in different alignments and guard the different alignments. I'm just going to show you a four out alignment. It's very common. You could start into one four high and then flow into this. It's a great way to teach your scout, but we'll just essentially kind of, whether it's in, we're in our pack line or our denial defense, uh, we'll start out with the ball here. And let's say we are on our pack line defense and we're, we're kind of here and then flat triangle away and we're going to move the ball around. We're going to move the ball around. Early in the year, we're going to front the post. I mean, this is our 5v5 change. Early in the year, we're going to front the post because I think that's the hardest thing to get a player to do. Later on, maybe week two, we'll start showing three quarter, three quarter, and then certain players in certain scout situations, we may play behind and encourage that pass and stay home on shooters. So again, that's that's defensive philosophy on the top. But what we'll do at some point is we'll call out change and we'll transition back the other way. And again, the O's here might drop the ball and the X's will now transition and we'll get into our break. And this is going to allow us really to teach a couple things. It'll kind of teach that flow. We don't very rarely going to call much. We want to kind of let the players play. We might we might dictate actions like kick aheads. You know, we may tell them that we're going to really work on our drag action, which is kind of that baseline drive. You know, drags and drifts. I call that where we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and dribble in here, and then we're gonna have a PG come behind. And kind of our general rule is if the ball gets kicked ahead before half court, we're going to drag behind it. If it gets kicked ahead past half court, we might cut away and let that player go. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a great little setup. It's, it's, it's scrimmage, but with a little bit of more control. And again, I, I think you can go, you could put one minute on the clock and allow the teams to play for a minute. I really like doing that rather than just stopping every time uh, it gets players used to, uh, to, to the time and score situations. I'm a big advocate of our players always knowing the time and the score, whether it's a drill, a small-sided game, a scrimmage situation, whatever it is we're doing, 
if I can, I'd like to put a time on it. Minimum, I'm going to put a score on it. Hope this helps a little bit, coaches. Again, it's early season. I'm going to do a couple more days here this week, give you five days of some things that I'm trying out this year, some things I've done in the past to, uh, to see if it can help your dribble drive a little bit, maybe some of the other parts of your game that you have to work on each week to get better. Good luck, coaches.